We have meteors from Halley's Comet inbound and sunspot activity, latest space weather. This is uh, May 4th. Meteors from Halley's Comet. Earth is approaching a stream of debris from Halley's Comet, source of the annual ETA Aquarid meteor shower. If forecasters are correct, the shower will peak tomorrow, May 5th, with as many as 40 meteors every single hour. 40 an hour. Can you imagine? The best time to look is during the dark hours before sunrise on Sunday. ETA, Aquarids, are fast, moving about uh, 66 kilometers per second, or that's 148,000 miles per hour, and often trace long orbit paths across the sky, so you can let, set your alarm to enjoy. And uh, we have active sunspots. Last month, the big sunspot, AR2738, crossed the face of the sun, emitting loud shortwave radio bursts and threatening to flare, and it's back again. The sunspot is returned to view following a two-week trip around the backside of the sun. And as per the tradition, it has been renumbered AR2740 for its second trip across the solar disk of our sun. The returning sunspot announced itself May 3rd, 2331 UT, with a C1-class solar flare and a CME, a coronal mass ejection. This movie from NASA's Solar uh, Dynamics Observatory shows eruption. You can see it here. I'll leave a link below for you for this. The CME is not heading for Earth. The sunspot was pointed almost 90 degrees away from our planet at the time of the explosion, thank goodness. Future CMEs might be more geo-effective. AR2740 is turning towards us, so towards our Earth, for a more direct line of fire in the days ahead. So we have to stay tuned for that. Mother's Day is less than two weeks away, and you could be looking for some unusual, very important Mother's Day gift. Well, there's a Mother's Day gift from the edge of space. 15% off coupon from Space Mom. Code Space Mom. You can see it here. Every week they come out with a little thing, a little gadget that you take up into space, and uh, if you want, you can buy it. So. Um, now, as far as the All Sky Fireball Network, every night a network of NASA All Sky cameras scan the skies above the United States for meteoritic fireballs. Automated software maintained by NASA's Meteoroid Environment Office calculates their orbits, their speed, their penetration depth in Earth's atmosphere, and other characteristics. Daily results are presented here on Space Weather. And May 3rd, yesterday, the network reported 32 fireballs. And you can see the diagram here. In this diagram, the inner solar system, all the fireballs orbit intersect at a single point. And here we go again. How strange that is. That single point is none other than Earth. How is that possible? Every time they intersect, every time they're coming to us, they're coming towards Earth. They're not going to some other planet. How is that possible? That's a big question. If there's any astronomer out there, please answer that for me. The near-Earth asteroids, potentially hazardous asteroids, are, are the space rocks larger than 100 meters that come close to Earth, closer than 0 0.05 AU. 1 AU is a distance between the Sun and Earth, that's about 93 million miles. None of the known PHAs, potentially hazardous asteroids, is on collision course with us, although astronomers are finding new ones all the time. And then we have the ERAD, that's something new, the cosmic rays in the atmosphere, and they seem to have increased about 20% in the last, what was it, 20 years, 18 years, 18% the past 20 years. That's it seems because of the fact that something is happening to our electromagnetic field and it's allowing, it's, it's lessening, it's weakening, which means that there's a lot more cosmic rays coming into us, and that's very bad news. So they've developed a new predictive model of aviation radiation, it's called ERAD, 
constantly flying radiation centers on board airplanes over the United States and around the world, and so far collected more than 22,000 GPS tagged radiation measurements. And using this data set, they predict the dosage on any flight over the US with an error no more than 15%. The hot flights table, as we can see, you can see here if you want, well, the more hours you are and the higher up in altitude you are, the more uh, radiation you're going to get. Uh, the bottom five commercial flights are United 810 from Washington to Chicago, uh, SkyWest again, Washington, Chicago, Southwest, Los Angeles, San Jose. Again, Washington, Chicago, because that's only what is it's uh, an hour, 40 minute flight. Then as you increase your flights or even the altitude, flying altitude, those flights, uh, Washington to Chicago, are at 24,000 feet and 22,000 feet. Then when you go to commercial flights that are around 36,000 feet, you increase your dosage to about 38.1. Whereas the other dosage, the lower one, uh, the other ones were at 18.5 and 16.3. So you see, you go up 10,000 feet, your dosage is increased twice, twofold. And then when you go up to 41,000 feet, your dosage increases from 38.1, it goes to 60.8. It's almost almost double every time you go up 10,000 feet. And then when you go, that's um, Chicago, New York. It's not the distance. It's the, the time is uh, just about the same, an hour, 37 minutes. It's the height, the altitude. Then when you go to the charter flights, uh, what is it? commercial flights or charter flights, the ones that are at 47,000 feet. <clears throat> For example, Los Angeles to White Plains or Van Nuys to Teterboro or Teterboro to Los Angeles. Okay, that's anywhere between four and a half to five hours flight. That's at around 45 to 47,000 feet. Your dose rate is at between 73 and 78. So you see how, and when you fly a lot higher than that, what happens? Your dose rate is over 100, I would imagine. If you're at 60,000 feet, I don't I have no idea. For the inter, we're talking about the international flights are much higher than the domestic, the um, national flights, the domestic flights. Now, um, then you have the space weather balloons that go up, having to do with the radiation. Mars, 2015 to July, 2018, yeah, I was wrong. It wasn't a 20-year period. It's an 18% increase in a three-year period. I said 20 years, and that was wrong. It's from the end of December until it's, it's basically, it's not, forget the end of December, December 20th, forget December. It's three, it's 15, 16, 17, 18. Four years, yeah. Four years stratospheric radiation March 2015 to July 2018, four years, is up 18%. Okay, that's due to the, uh, that's corresponding graph, the uh, Renninger Fotzer Maximum, which lies about 67,000 feet above Central California. When cosmic rays crash into the Earth's atmosphere, they produce a spray of secondary particles that's most intense in the entrance to the stratosphere. Physicists Eric Renniger and George Fotzer discovered the maximum using balloons in the 1930s. So, uh, okay, so we went through the uh, hot flights and we're in for a treat tomorrow morning. Uh, I will be sure to see them because I'm going to be going very early to get up to go to church and I have to pick up the priest to take him to the church first. So. Uh, I'll be able to see them. I'll make a point. Okay, so uh, I'll leave a link below for you for this on space weather. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my 
Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.